are transferred to the sides on the bottom to give more width in the uh, bottom. This is an English chemise I started telling you before. She has a French chemise because the French added um, two more go days. And so that's strange enough in when they were dressing Louis XV, this was the only thing that he actually put on was his own stockings. He actually put them on, there was no, well, everybody else was giving everything else and doing their turn, dressing him. This is the one thing he did for himself, uh -huh. was put on his stockings. So, so that's, okay, isn't that pretty? <laughs> and those will stay up? <laughs> yes, but my second model set up, of, um, this could be a whole lecture in itself. A lot of this today is just giving you little bits and pieces because it's such a huge subject. And um, but all I tell you, they grew it and then they went through a, a section of retting, in which they, they crushed the husk because the inside part is where they got the linen that made the thread to do bobbin lace and um, a, a very fine um, chemise. This chemise is about half the opaqueness of what you would, the very finest uh, chemise at that period of time. It was so sheer, it was so sheer, maybe it's because I knew that. It was so sheer that there are written in autobiographies of tying up a lady's corset that they would have a little peak in the back because you don't tie a corset close together, there's a few <laughs> inches. Uh, I'm after this time, I don't know, I haven't found out, but I'm thinking maybe the few inches allowed the person to breathe <laughs> rather than keeping it close, it lets air through. But they would check the chemise to see if the person was really very fair skinned. So, of course, if she had put all the makeup on, and of course she didn't put down the back, and then tying up the corset, they would see if she had more olive skin, which was a little bit more frowned. So they were peeking while they're putting on the underwear. <laughs> it, um, the plant in itself was used in many, many ways. The rougher um, uh, flax was used everything from canvas to rope, while the very refined was used for the very wealthy. The plant, strange enough, for the very wealthy and very refined pieces actually died out in 1800. And I have heard that the Smithsonian had some seeds and they were going to try and recreate this plant again. But there's no linen today that was as fine as it was in the 18th, and 9th, uh, 18th century. It just became a little cruder. Now, for um, <coughs> as for linen it itself, if you um, fold it, you will sort of break the um, um, fiber, or it will be creased if it's done really intensely. And the other thing is French laundresses. French laundresses could wipe out a chemise in three weeks. So, the acceptable wedding gift in the 18th century was to give someone six dozen chemises. Now, I know the last wedding I went to, I wouldn't dare give the bride underwear. But it was the acceptable gift. And you can see why they wore them out. And if you are changing, as the, today we're only going to be doing these four different pieces, but uh, a, a wealthy woman. Uh, would might change four to eight times a day. And when you see there's two people getting her ready for the, the different places that we're going to go today, you could see their life was all about changing fashion and doing pastimes at home, such as needlework, etc., which we'll talk about later. Okay, ready? But this is this by the way is um, putting it out to wash. There was a strange combination of uh, linen that when they washed it they put it on the lawn, and um, there was a reaction between the chlorophyll and the grass and the sun, and it whitened it. Now, when it got to, I'm, I'm changing the era a little bit further on, I recreated the Chimay Saint of Marie Antoinette at UCLA, and we dipped it in the blue that used to, to make it this pure white, and put it on the roof in the sun for four days and it worked beautifully. Um, I would have liked to put it out on the grass, but it's a dog friendly um, <laughs> painting showing of the cleaning and how they worked uh, with this linen, with this linen or uh, the, very, the very fine linen. Actually, they went to such extremes that they put it on a ship 
and they send it over to um, San Domingue, and it was blued and put out to be whitened and sent back to the house before it was sold. And, um, which shows that the, the ones in Paris, apparently they couldn't get their lemons or any of the boils or something. It always became yellow. Thank you, thank you. She's now going to put on mules. I have to watch the time because it's very easy to get away with all this now. But she's now wearing mules. This is the acceptable um, shoe. This is, of course, a recreated. I was having some made for this, but the company called up and couldn't get them done in time. So these were covered. The toe is a little more pointy than what I would like. But um, this was the acceptable shoe that you uh, didn't have to uh, have the latchet shoe that I'm going to show you later. Uh, many of the portraits, seeing this is evolving, revolving around Madame de Pompadour, you will see her shoes. That she has pink with silver embroidery. So I have never seen her in a court shoe, I don't think. She also likes to wear these